welcome everybody. Um, tonight's a really fun class. We're going to be making uh, these really gorgeous stackable slider bracelets. And um, they are made with slider charms. So the, the little charms that you see in, in Michael's, if you go to the charm wall, they are located underneath the charms, kind of in the same area there. Um, and they're meant to go on leather. Here's the back. Here's what the back looks like on these. But they're even funner with seed beads. And so this class is going to show one way to create a little slider band using um, either Muki Delicas or size 11 rounds. And make these fun little stackables. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera and then show you guys um, all of the uh, components that we're using. And there we go. Here's just kind of in process samples. And here's the finished bracelets, some samples of those. And um, what I'm going to do for class today is walk through creating the band and then the side closures, creating the brick stitch on top, adding the sliders and securing them in place with the brick stitch, and then finishing the other side. And so we will need, um, first thing we're going to need is thread and Miyuki Delicos. And so there are a lot of different colors. Um, I think I'm going to use these colors today because they really agree with the camera. So we've got this gorgeous kind of green turquoise color, and this other one is a red. And they're both opaques. And the thread I'm using is four pound fireline. And you can use other types of thread, but um, I went with something uh, with a little more, um, you know, waxy finish to it because it, it makes these just a little bit stiffer than if you used the Nymo. But you can use Nymo if you'd like to. But today I'm using the four pound fireline. And I'm also using a size 12 beading needle. I think it would be fine to use a size 10. But I think uh, the best thing to use uh, is a 12 if you're going to be using it to go um, brick stitch is easier with a 12, I think. And then for sliders. So um, again, this is in the charm section, but there's, oh my goodness, there's so many to choose from. And again, these are the ones that are supposed to go on leather, but how cool to put them on a little Delica band. And so there's one I've opened. But the um, the SKUs for the sliders that I've used in the samples and the handout are um, the best way to find them online. So if you're trying to find these online and they're not coming up in the, I think they will come up as charms, but if you'd like to drill down to sliders, the best way is actually to enter the SKU for one of the ones in the handout and then drill up from there. If you look on um, the section that it's in and then just go up one section and you'll see, I think there's like maybe even 50 different versions of these beautiful sliders. Some of them have like little jerseys on them. Um, so yeah, I kind of went crazy when I first saw those. They're very, very beautiful. Okay, so in the handout, it says to cut about 50 inches of thread. This design, it is really, really easy to add thread. So don't worry too much about it. If you want to leave a longer tail than the 15 inches, that's actually okay to do because you can use that tail as one way to not have to add thread when we add the um, sliders. So I'll show that when I get to that spot. I'm also using, uh, these are just regular recollections, precision scissors, I'm using them to cut my thread. Okay, and so um, here's my beading needle. I believe you can try flattening these as well with the chinos pliers as we do uh, with the wildfire. I'm just kind of using my fingernails to do it this time, but a little tiny size 12 here. Worth the effort though, because it just makes it a little bit smoother to work with. And once you have your needle threaded and you've chosen your colors, um, go ahead and choose one color to start. You could make multiple colors if you wanted to. To keep it simple today, I'm just going to use one color for my main band and a new color 
for the rip stitch side. So here's size 11. Okay. So the stitch I'm going to show you guys. Oh, and I, I was wondering. I forgot my own idea. I was going to show you guys how to do this first with a larger bead. Just looking at my focus here. Um, because they are so tiny. I'm going to spend about five minutes showing you guys with a larger bead. So just to demonstrate the stitch, I'm going to use some size eight rounds. And so um, the slider bands won't work with the eights because they're too big, but this is just to demonstrate the type of peyote stitch I'm doing. And the stitch is called two drop peyote. And so you'll recognize that it's just regular peyote stitch with only, you know, you're adding, essentially treating two beads as one and you only have to add one per column. So this stitches up really fast. To start it, you'll pick up four of your beads, get those on there. And again, you can leave a 15 inch tail like the handout says, or if you would like to leave a longer tail, it might come in handy later. And it will add you, um, you know, it'll probably remove one thread ad for you. So there's four beads on the line. And this is my working side. This is my tail side. I'm going to skip those first two and coming up from the working side, going through the tail side, bring these two new beads through those first two we added. And pull tight. And then a trick I use for peyote stitch, I like to pull the working and tail threads apart. And when you're working with the delicas, you'll notice they really pop into position super easy at this step. And, and even the eights, they're doing a great job too. So this is a really great way to start peyote. Just tightening it up there. So there's rows one, two, and three already done. So I'm going to pick up two more. And yeah, this is called two drop peyote. Sorry if I miss saying that. Um, I loosened this. So I'm just going to tighten it up one more time. Bringing these two new beads just through these two now. And for each uh, new row, that's all you got to do. So I'm going to bring this tight through. Okay. And they kind of stack like, really like little kind of almost, I don't know if I would call it stacking like a brick, but it is certainly offset from the former bead. And I added two more and I went through the next upside. Hold tight. And those first few rows, when I say the first few rows, probably the first six or seven rows. So first six or seven adds of a bead, you're going to be adjusting, tightening, maybe less so with the delicas, but um, with peyote stitch, that's something that I like to make the stitch really tight in the beginning. The rest of it just goes together nicely. So there we go. There's six rows. And coming up through here, a few more. So I'll do a few more just to make sure everyone's got this and then I'm gonna to switch to the Delicos. And that's it, that's two drop peyote. So I'm gonna set this aside. And uh, move those really quick. And then switching back to size 11 delicas. Okay, same thing here, but tinier. <laughs> I'm just picking up four. And um, leave a good tail. You can leave more than 15 inches if you want. 
I'm picking two. Beads up, two delicas. Moving the last two that I added out of the way. And again, this is the working side. This is the tail side. I'm coming through the first two beads we added to start. And then pull that tight. All right. And so that's that little pop where they pop into place. I know it's a little challenging to see it, but um, again, here I'm pulling the working tails, working thread and the tail threads apart to tighten that up. And picking up two more beads. And then turning and going through that next up bead. We're treating two beads as one here. And that's, that's the whole stitch. Um, and then uh, I'll do a few more stitches here. And if anyone has any questions about this step, let me know. And then I was gonna talk a little bit about the next step after you've got a band like made that's a link that you want. So there's another two. Not two more. So that's super easy, even count, no turns other than this each bead add. And this is when you could do, um, you know, there's you don't have to count or really pay attention too much. So you can, you know, do this while watching TV or listen to some music. And it goes really fast. So something to think about when you're working on this is what length do I want to take this to? So fast forward. Um, this probably took me, this probably took me 25 minutes to do, I would say, maybe a little faster. I'm not sure exactly how long I took, but it didn't feel like a very long time in the, the realm of bead weaving often does to me. So this one didn't seem like it took that long. So I think it's, I would still call it a fast project, um, but you saw how long it took us to do that much, you know, a few, few minutes there. So for, for the length, you would just keep doing those steps, adding two beads at a time until you got to the end. Now, um, there's a little bit of planning that comes up at this spot. And that is, uh, what slider are you using? Are you using some where there's three, like what we did on these? or where there's one big slider. And a few of the sliders come like this and they're, oh, they're so pretty. And some of them have one bar and some of them have two bars. And a really good thing to do with this step is to test your slider and see if it fits. If it does, great. If it doesn't, um, you might have to try something different. But the most of the sliders that I have from Michaels, they all work with this Delicas. If you're using 11s, like this one was made of 11s, in the handout, it kind of talks about um, testing it earlier as you're making your band. And if you run into that where they're not sliding easily, stitch it on as you're making this band. So at some point here, I would need to know where my slider is gonna go, add it, and then continue stitching. But with the Delicas, you won't have to worry about that. They're gonna slide right on. All the sliders will, will fit, the ones at Michael's will fit. Um, but you'll wanna take a tape measure. And this one is six inches. And what I did with this one is I measured where my three inch point was and decided that's where my center slider is gonna go. And then I did three quarters of an inch on either side to get my other slider positions. Now these aren't locked down yet, but this is a, an example that's another six inch length. And when I add my clasp, that's gonna make it more like 6.5. So that's why I only did six here. Um, I have my center at three inches here, the little cactus. And I'm ready to add the sliders here. And I used my tail thread to stitch up the brick stitch on that side and my working thread on that side. So I'm gonna show you guys that next. But at this step, you will wanna plan Number one, what length do you want? And then where do you want your slider? 
to sit. And once you've got that figured out, then it's time for step two. And what you'll want to do for that is take your working thread. And yours will still have a needle on it. Mine doesn't. But... It's super quiet there today. No questions so far. So the little the twelves are a little tricky. The the fire line is sticky, so I struggle with threading it just a little bit more. But so again, here's my six inch piece. And don't forget to add your sliders. Sometimes I finish the sides before putting my sliders on. Um, I did that twice. So um, you can add your first side, no problem. But before we add the second side, you got to put the sliders on. And I'll, I'll uh, hopefully remember to do that. But so here at the end, we just added our last two delicas in the band. I'm going to pick up six new beads. So there's four five and six. And so this is the first side that I'm making. Exiting from that top bead, come through the next set of two. And a little loop will form. And then I'm just going to go back up through those next, the next two here. And come back to the loop. I'm going to do this two more times. So this is number two, two, three. Just going through those two there. Okay, last trip through the round here. All right. So exiting from one of these top beads, I'm going to start brick stitching until I reach that spot where I want to add my first slider. And I'm going to switch colors, that gorgeous red color. And so um, with brick stitch, the first step is to pick up two beads. And then you want to find the thread bridges. So the thread bridges are these little places where the thread goes from one bead to the next when we did our turns. So each one of those is a thread bridge. And you can bring your needle under it and use it as a place to anchor for a lot of different stitch possibilities. And so that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go through the second one. And if you're having trouble seeing it, you can also do this. You can go through, just go through the beads. Like see how I just, right in between them, it'll pick up the thread bridge when you pull in the upward direction. And you'll feel it snap. You'll feel it snap uh, into that thread bridge. And come up through the second bead that was added. And so in the handout, it talks about a way to straighten it out if they're bowing in towards each other like these are doing. They're, they're going in a different direction than I want them to. So what you can do is you can come down through the first one that was picked up. And down through the first one. And then pick up the thread bridge that was the first one. So remember, we went through the second one when we started. I'm going to go through the first one now. And going up through that first bead. And that made it sit in a parallel plane with the band, which is what I was hoping it would do. And I'm just going to come back down through the second so I can get back to exiting. I want to be exiting that second bead. Doing the same thing again. Going under the thread bridge here. Up. 
And there's the first two done. And so we just need to do that for another couple of inches and then get out a, a tape measure and see where, where it's lining up. So once you um, finish that first step, pick up one bead. And so from here on out, in brick stitch, you just need to add one bead until we get to the slider and we're gonna restart underneath the slider. But one for now. And picking up thread bridge here. Coming up through the same bead. And getting it to lock in place. I'll do that a few more times. Does anyone have any questions about this step? This is one of the more advanced steps in this uh, pro in this project. I think it goes pretty fast. You can get an inch done in you know, a couple minutes. But it looks just like that. And you can just keep going. And so I have another sample um, that's a fast forward from there. And on that one, I put the sliders on and I measured to the center, which for me was three inches, put the center one on, and then I measured about three quarters of an inch away from it in both directions. And I put my first slider. So this is where where I want my first slider to go. And I brick stitched all the way from here to there. And so that's where this one was left off with its thread exiting from the last bead I added in my brick stitch. So I'm slide this one up. So again, that was the same thing, just fast forwarding from here to here. And so I put the slider in the spot where I want it to stay. And the way to get it to stop moving across the band is we're gonna start brick stitching on this side of it. And here's the back. Here's what the back looks like. On the back has these bars. And there's a, you know, there's a good amount of room under them. So they, they move pretty freely. But if I put brick stitch on either side, it's gonna hold it in place. And so that's the whole reason we're doing the brick stitch step but it's not gonna fit another bead under it. So we need to get over here and start again. And to do that, exiting from the last bead we brick stitched, go back through the bead next to it. So that's the second to last one that you added in your brick stitch. And now we're gonna weave around. So I'm, I'm going down through this bead. I'm gonna go through the work here. So just through from here, I'm just gonna go through the next one, treating these two beads as one bead. Down through here. And then coming up. And so from here, I know the width of the slider is about the width of a bead. So I'm gonna come up over on this direction. See how I had a choice in, uh, sorry, in peyote, you can, when you're weaving and you can go to either of the ones that are next to it. So I'm going up to the one that's a little further along. And now I'm gonna need to go under my slider with my needle. So coming underneath, getting my thread over on the right side, bring the slider over and there we go. Now I'm exiting from where I want to be. And I'm going to pick up two new beads so I can start a brick stitch again. And so same thing we did before. Two beads means two thread bridges. So I'm going to skip, since these are the same size beads, I'm going to go one for one. And uh, that would be thread bridge number one. Here's thread bridge number two. It's coming under that one. Coming up. And then the same thing again, where um, it's a knit, but if you wanted it to sit perfectly straight, 
this bracelet will work great without doing this step, but if, if you feel like doing it, you can straighten it out by going back down through the second bead. And then coming back up through it. I went under the thread bridge, sorry. And then I came back up through it. And there, see, it just popped right back in. Just a way to make it look really polished, which is, um, you know, it's an extra step, but it, I feel like it's a, kind of a high yield step. It, it gives you a really nice result. There we go. So slider one is locked. It can move a little bit, but that's okay. It's not gonna move too much. And so the next thing I would wanna do, and um, I think I'll show you guys that since we're, we're, it looks like we're doing really great on time. I'm picking up one bead, go under, under thread bridge and then back up. And I know it, I know I wanted to sift up the midpoint here. So I think I need to do five beads, brick stitch five beads here, five or six. I'll, I'll test it again, but let's just throw those on there really quickly. There's one. And I am I am just eyeballing that. I didn't measure it, um, but you can. You can bring a tape measure out and, and take a look. But at this point, I'd already done that work in the earlier step. So I, I feel like once I locked in the first one here, I just kind of knew where they should go. And uh, one or two more, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna look at it again. There we go. Okay. Hmm. I think I, I think, uh, hmm. I'm actually thinking two more beads. And then I'll show you that adding the slider part again. Here's one. And then two. Okay, now I'm liking it. I'm thinking that's good. So same thing as before, we need to get on the other side so we can complete the brick stitching between these two. So I'm going back through that second bead in from the end. Coming down and weaving around. So going through the next little set here in my peyote band. Down through the next one. And up. And again, here I have a choice. I could go here or here. I wanna go over to this one. Give me lots of room. And now I need to bring the slider over and go under it. And this is a place where it can help to flip the backside so you can see a little bit better. So now my thread's exiting from, from this bead. It's coming out of this bead right here. It's a nice tight fit. So again, starting brick stitch again. So picking up two beads, going through the second thread bridge. So that's one, and this is two here. Coming up. And then I'm, again, I'm gonna straighten this out. I'm not sure it can be seen pretty clearly, but see how that bead is facing this direction and that one's facing this way. So I'm gonna straighten it out by going back down through that bead there, going through the thread bridge. To do that, I'm just, basically just stabbing through that column and then pulling up and see, so that's how I know I've got the thread bridge caught. Now I need to go back through that bead. So coming up that way. And there, makes it sit, you know, in plane, just, just kind of lined up with the others. 
And now back through that last bead here, under the thread bridge and back up through that. There you go. And so what I would do from here is pick up one more bead and just start doing regular brick stitch, one for one, one bead, next thread bridge, one bead, next thread bridge, until I reach the same point for my next slider. See that one's locked in place, that one's locked. Wiggles a little bit, but not too much. Hi, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey, I want, I want to let you know that sidebar is good. Everyone is definitely following along. We did hey. have a one, one good question from Anna. Um, you, you, it was, it's your design. You chose to only lock the slider in place on one side of your bracelet. Why didn't you try, why didn't you decide to do both? Um, oh, well you could, it would be really beautiful. Um, ma mainly honestly, because of time, because I wanted this to be something I could demonstrate in an hour, but yeah, you could do the same thing here. Just come along the other side and lock it in on this side. That would be great. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. And so um, I wanted to also mention what I did on this one. You're notice, probably noticing that this side is done. Well, what happened was I ran out of thread and I'm gonna show you how to add thread next, but what happened was I was doing this part and I ran out of thread and I wanted to put my sliders on and not lose them. So I picked up my tail thread on this side and I finished my, my loop. And then I started brick stitching in that direction with my tail. And that's why I was mentioning, you can leave a longer tail if you want and you can use it like that to save you adding thread. But um, I'm still gonna show adding thread because you might wanna make one that wraps around your wrist more than one time, or you might wanna make a choker or something like that. So I'm gonna show you how to make a really long one if you want to. Um, but this was one way to make this project even faster was to use my tail, leave a lot more than 15 inches on the side and then just kind of travel back. And so um, if I hadn't done that, what we would be doing next is, um, oh, sorry, oh, there we go. <laughs> I would, you know, uh, finish stitching to this one, lock this one in place and then brick stitch all the way to the other side and finish my loop. Um, so from here, what you would do is you would add a clasp to either side and, um, can show that now or, or um, I was thinking, yeah, why don't I show that so you guys can see a complete one, sort of. And then I was gonna show adding thread on my other sample. And we could also show creating that loop one more time if anyone wanted to see that again. But so what I'm using now is a findings pack. Um, any class will work, you can use anything you want. You can also add, as we did on these, um, you can add little charms to it too. So putting a couple of jump rings and then grabbing charms out of the charm wall or like the strand wall and adding them to the end. But super easy and anything will will be perfect. Um, but for, um, let's see, I got some pliers really quick. I'm using some bent nose pliers, which, uh, which look like that. And then I'm also using some of the flat, um, I don't know, some people call it square, is square nose correct? I've never known truly what to call these, but they are they're kind of like chinos, but with a boxed end. I like them for jump rings because they make it easier to hold the shape of my ring. And then the bent nose just make it easier to see what you're doing. So opening those laterally and attaching to the loop. Get my lobster claw, put that on there. and then just close it. These are so fun. And I do think that they can, they're whipped up pretty quickly. So it would be cool to make like a, maybe three or four and just stack them with all your favorite charms. There's one done. And I mixed up the metals. I, I just started to, like, I, I decided that that looks great. I used to always have to match it now. I really like mixing up the colors, silver and gold together. 
And what I did with this one was I had two charm packs and I took some charms out of one. I took the moon off of this one. And then I took the cactus and the sun off of this one, which had a little llama guy. So many ideas. There's so many great things you can do. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to I'm gonna switch back to this one where we were we were brick stitching along here. Um, on this side, or actually on this side, I'm running out of thread. So see, that's all I've got left. That's not gonna work. So, and even if I take my tail, which is over here, and I use it to do some of the brick stitch, I'm still gonna end up adding thread because I really only left the 15 inches on that side. So here's how to do it. Um, leave this in place, wherever it is that you were when you ran out, just leave it and cut some new thread. And as far as how much to cut, just whatever is a comfortable length for you. I wouldn't go too crazy. Like I tend to never go more than 50 inches because it's, it's unwieldy unless it's one of those ones where I'm folding it over or leaving a lot on the, on the end or working with two needles or something, but more than 50 and I, I'll always get a knot <laughs> I've noticed. Um, so I'm going to thread this needle really quick. And this is one that um, I worked with earlier, so it's going to go in a lot easier. Okay, so I want to weave in and I want to change direction three times. Same thing we do, uh, you know, with a lot of our designs where uh, we just, we go one direction, another direction and back, and then try to exit in the same place where we left our tail or, you know, our remaining working thread. But as far as where you start, you can start anywhere. There's no rule to that. And you know you've got it when, I'm gonna leave a little bit of thread on this side, maybe like, maybe like that much or so. When this stops moving, when we pull, we know we did our weave in pretty solid. So exiting from here, I'm just gonna come down to the next one. I'm gonna go down through this one here. Come up. And so we're I'm gonna see here. I'm gonna come over here. And go down one more. And now I'm going to aim for, I'm going to aim for over here. So and here's what I'm seeing. I'm going to pull this, pull in pretty hard. And it's not moving over here. So I, I got it. I'm going to trim it. And then just keep going. So I want to exit from where my last thread was. I'm going to turn and come back through through this side. Come up through this one. OK. And so at this point, you can take your old working thread and weave it back in. Another trick for, can you see where I did my, my turn? You can kind of see the thread a little bit there. If it's doing that to you, spin them. This works with looming too. But just spin the beads in your hand. It's gone. Okay, and so um, we're doing really good on time. So let's see. <clears throat> for, for, from here where I was, you would just keep brick stitching until you reach a spot where you want to put a slider on it. And on this one, I don't have my other end done yet. So I can show that. Um, this is so cute. I'm gonna put this one on. I think I just wanna have one slider for this one because I'm gonna wear it stacked with, um, I'm gonna wear it stacked with this. So I'm gonna offset it so that he's kind of sitting over here when I wear them together. This is where it really becomes really fun. Is, you know, how do you want this to look as like a stacker? Hi, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. I, was, I was waiting for a great chance to ask you a question. Sure. Um, 
first of all, uh, whether you had the sliders or not, the, this technique to make um, a band bracelet is beautiful. And um, with all the different color delicas, they could make some beautiful bracelets anyhow. But yeah. would you ever use small crystals on the edge? Um, so you mean like uh, in the brick stitch part or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, that would be amazing. So you could. I believe you could, yeah. Um, so any any crystal, I mean, the thing with brick stitch, you can use any size bead you want on any surface. You'll just have to adjust what um, thread bridge you use. So for example, the delicas I'm using, I just go into the next thread bridge because they're the same size bead. So they're just gonna brick on top exactly, you know, because they're all exactly the same size. But if I wanted to throw, I don't know, so let's, let's try size eight. If I wanna put size eight on there, I have those in front of me. See how much bigger that is? I just skip a thread bridge. So instead of going to the next one, skip it. And so a crystal, like this is about, a size eight seed bead isn't super far off from a, like a three millimeter crystal. A size six seed bead would be closer to a four. And um, what'll happen when you start brick stitching with beads that are larger um, than the one before it? is you'll get a bow, it'll be going that the wrong direction. But then when you put the next one on, and again, I skipped a bridge here. And I'm just guessing, I'm just seeing like what placement looks good. Sometimes you have to take them apart, but the bow goes away when you add the next bead. And if you guys remember from our wreath earrings that we did, that always happened when we put the six and then we put the little bead and then the six. Yeah, you That's can- great, Danielle. That will give so a few people a few extra things to experiment with. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Actually, I never thought of putting a crystal on it. How gorgeous. So let's see, I'm thinking, um, and does anyone wanna see putting the end on again? Or is that super clear? Or? I agree, Danielle. I think with the time that we have left, um, we did have a few people that um, came in late. I think the most important thing is how to start. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. And uh, okay. would you mind doing it with the red beads, Danielle, so that they can really see um, the two by two? The red delicas or um, yeah. were you? Yeah, okay. I do have red size eights if that's even better, but- um, The red delicas. Red delicas, got it, okay. So um, I'm using four pound fire line. This will work fine with other threads. I didn't use the wildfire because it was a little thick for the flexibility. I want them to move, right? Nymo will be great too, but I liked the strength and stickiness of the of the four pound just for this, you know, just for this design. It kind of suited me. And then the um in the handout it says to cut 50 inches. And then it says to leave a 15 inch tail. And you'll end up adding thread. So 50 inches won't finish it, but we just covered adding thread. So no worries there. But if you wanted to leave an extra long tail, you can use it to finish the other side. And I'll show you that now. But I just threaded a comfortable working length and I folded it over, threaded it onto my needle. And now I'm gonna pick up four of my Delica beads and slide it down. And if you're leaving a super long tail, just go ahead and leave that long tail or leave 15 inches or so. 15 inches is plenty to make that loop at the end. So that'll work fine, but yeah, try it, try a design and see which you, which you like the most. And so we added four here and now pick up two more. And what you'll want to do is move these two down. This is the working side. And this is the tail side. So I'm moving these, the last two I added and going back through the first two I added in the opposite direction. So headed toward the tail and pull tight. And they'll pop into place and to make them extra tight. You can pull the tail and the working threads apart. And they'll sit there in that little like kind of T-shape. Like that. And so you just pick up two more. And now turning back through the ones we added um, in that last step, come through there. Two more. Go 
going through those. And so we're, we're treating two beads like one bead. It's called two drop peyote. And it has a lot of you know, benefits. One is that um, you get a, a wider band with less work because two beads is being treated as one bead. So it's only one stitch. And then you also get done faster. So it, it's a bonus. And yeah, and you just keep adding beads until you reach a working length uh, for a band that you like. And then earlier in class, we talked about, well, how long should I make this, this section? So you just keep doing this. You just keep adding two beads at a time until you reach a length you want. And so um, if you're doing the kind of clasp that I did with the lobster and the jump rings, you'll want to um, make this about half inch smaller than your buckled wrist size. So, um, but if you're selling these pieces, like at a market, go ahead and make this part six inches long and then just add a bunch of chain at the end and a lobster claw and it'll be adjustable. That's one way you could do it. But um, in the case of this one, made this six inches long. And um, so again, we're working, here we're working with Delicas. There is um, extra instruction in the handout and a sample of how this looks with some size 11 check glass seed beads. It works, it works great. The only thing you'll run into is when you're making the band, you'll wanna test your slider on it. Um, it may not fit and it may not slide freely. I ran into a few that fit and a few that didn't um, and it was tight when they did. So what I would recommend doing if you wanted to put sliders on your 11 rounds is put the slider on as you're doing this part. So how that would look, um, just pretend I'm using 11s, but you know, you just keep going. You get to a point where you think you might want the slider to sit because it won't move um, on those 11s. It won't move as well, but bring your slider over <clears throat> and do it upside down, place it, bring through as much as you can get through. On my 11s, I was able to get only one side through Pick up two more. Oh, and before you do that, you'll have to go with your thread. You need to bring your thread through the slider. Sorry, I forgot that. Hopefully, I, I think I'd already done that. I did do that, right? Yeah. Okay, so my thread is through the slider. And now the first part is through. There we go. Okay. And you'll pick up two and complete your stitch around the slider like that. And then on, on this one, of course, this is Delica, so it's still going to move freely, but on the 11 one that I made, the size 11 rounds, um, I had to kind of work like this with the slider in place for the rest of the band. It was totally fine. It worked great. Um, and I still did the brick stitch because I thought it was pretty, but I could have gotten away with not doing it because the 11s were so tight that it just kind of held them right in that spot. Danielle? Yeah. I have a question for you and a wonderful suggestion. Sure. The first first question is, what is the difference between the four pound fire line and the 006 fire line? The point, oh, six pound and four pound? Um, yeah. little, a little bit thinner, acts more like a thread um, and is um, going to make a less stiff band. So, only, you know, and as far as that, that being noticeable, only a beater will notice it. <laughs> but look how this moves. It just just go into town with movement. Um, the six wouldn't be super different. It would just be a little bit stiffer. And then uh, additionally, when you're doing your passes through this part, when you get to your third pass, you may need to use some chain as pliers to pull, but it'll be fine. Perfect. So if they have the six, they can still do the project or experiment at home. And I think the, the six second, will, yeah. Yeah, the second thing is someone just said, with the sliders that you're using, why don't you just make a peyote ring? <laughs> yeah, you totally could. That would be great. Yeah, maybe you can finish this llama into a ring. Uh, yeah, okay, speed time. I do it. <laughs> you don't have to do it today, but someone thought it was a great idea. So maybe you could post that on your Instagram page. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. 
a slider ring. I thought I thought we were gonna finish it in our 10 minutes. And I'm like, I can have to find you that actually. <laughs> I'd have to go super speed, but I don't know. But yeah, so um any other questions about about um do you guys want to see some more sliders? Um I made the mistake of taking my son when I went to buy sliders. And he kept his mask on. He was good. He really wanted to be there. But I have a lot of sliders. <laughs> he kept filling up the cart. He, he loved the turtles and he loved these little um, seahorses. That was one he liked. He likes big things, so he, he needed the big abalones. Um, and then I picked these because I thought these were cool. Those are just gorgeous. Um, and then look at these bees. Wouldn't that be cool, like on pink? So we have a pink Delica color. I don't know, I just thought that was cute. The flower's pink, it's not coming across on my screen very well, but the pop there, that's adorable. And uh, my son picked these, he thought those were cool. Now I could put that on black and that would be amazing. And then they have a lot of like yoga inspired ones, which right now, I don't know about you guys, but I need some more zen. So these felt very peaceful to me. So there's my, my whole slider collection. <laughs> Danielle, you can stop now. Everyone's seeing their tally adding up in the shop. I know. <laughs> I just don't want to be alone. <laughs> I just, uh, I was loving them. So, yes. um, yeah. Danielle, next week's project, why don't you walk people through it? Because it's more of an intermediate level. Yes. Okay. So next week, we're going to make a right angle weave um, bracelet. And it's as a rope stitch. It's considered an advanced stitch or at least an intermediate one, but um, everyone who made the pearl cuffs with us can remember that um, the right angle weave, the hardest part is just getting it to stay put. And I use the same trick with this that we did on the flat version, which was we went through it twice. And so the only difference here between what we did in the pearl cuff class and how this is built is when you've got three segments, you join it. And then you build up on top of the segments around in a rope. Um, because for that class, all we're going to do is this. I'll have plenty of time to start it, restart it, and we'll go really slow, step by step. I think you guys are going to love this stitch because it's very versatile. It's super flexible. Um, you can do a lot with it. And it is a, um, it's a, a builder stitch. So there's some new projects that we're working on for April that right, having a mastery of a right angle weave will help with that. And so I'm really excited about those projects. So definitely please join for this one. And, you know, if you're new to beading, just, uh, you know, give it a try and see if you like it. Um, and it's gonna be helpful either way because it'll help with the April projects. And then last but not least for February projects, let's see, I'm grabbing a sample here. So if you remember last October, we did a really fun earring project that was a, a star flower design. And we used um, different size six check glass seed beads and size 11s to make flowers that were earrings. Well, in this case, in that class, somebody suggested joining them. And I was like, oh, we need to do that. And so we actually combined two classes here. We have the earrings and then we combined our wavy herringbone bracelet to be the band, uh, to be the necklace um, chain for it. So we'll do that uh, in the last week of February. And then um, we'll show you guys March. <laughs> so that's, that's all those projects. Um, let's switch back to my other camera. See if anyone has any other questions for me or wants to see any more projects that we've got coming up. Oh, I see a thank you from Pam. Thank you. Yes, and thank you to Carmi, because I could not do this without Carmi and Millie. They, um, they make this possible for me to do. <laughs> it's it's um, a lot of work for them. So I thank you guys. Oh, I'm seeing all the comments now. It's all just some nice stuff, guys. Thank you so much. That's great, yeah, Danielle. Sure. Normally, we work right to the bitter end, and you never get to see everyone's great comments as they fly <laughs> by. So. Thank you again for another great class and, and hope everyone uh, tags um, Make It With Michaels.
and so we can see the finished projects. Yeah, I love seeing everyone's projects. So yeah, please share and post. All right, um, so thank you so much and I'll, uh, hopefully I'll see you guys back next Friday and have a really great weekend and happy Valentine's Day. Bye everybody.